Hello, hello everyone. Once again, I'm the fish, and I'm here to bring you guys another awesome StarCraft 2 match. Now, this is straight off of the front page of Team Liquid, where I found that Sheth had released a uh, pretty good uh, replay pack, and there were some pretty notable games within it, so I decided that I absolutely had to cast a few of them. So, uh, you know, both of these, uh, both these players <laughs> know each other pretty well. They're already talking. Um, so, for those of you, who, maybe you, who you, you don't know who they are, <coughs> spawning uh, in the left, bottom left corner of the map is going to be none other, none other than Liquid Chef, who is an American Zerg player, one of the best American Zerg players at the moment. He plays for Team Liquid, and uh, there's been some, a uh, little bit of a feud between uh, Liquid and EEG, which has been going on for quite some time. Uh, some people compare them to the light side and the dark side. Uh, some people have compared it to, you know, the, the kind of the good guys and the bad guys. Do you like to root for the good guys or the bad guys? E.G. of course, in this case, uh, is the bad guys. Sheth is always so mannered. Uh, so uh, Sheth, American Zerg player, he's uh, notably the most recent accomplishment of him was actually an all kill. He all killed uh, E.G. What that means is that he defeated all five uh, E.G. players uh, recently in the IPL uh, Tech Tech Three, I think, and so that was pretty good really impressive by him to watch but uh, he just he suffered a, a tough loss in the uh, most recent um, home story cup which uh, we, some of us were hoping he would do a little better but uh, it was very tough Zerg vs Protoss, Zerg vs Protoss I think he lost in his EVP and that's been a tough matchup lately. Uh, another tough matchup lately is Zerg vs Terran so spawning in the bottom right corner is going to be EG Thorzane. He is the winner of the most recent Dreamhack competition. He's a very good a very very good Terran player possibly the best uh, foreigner uh, Terran and uh, yeah this is gonna be a, hopefully a really good game we see that Sheth is going for a uh, hatch first here and uh, the map is going to be Antigua Shipyard <laughs> so they're talking about the upcoming I guess they're talking about the upcoming Home Story Cup which happened uh, just this weekend uh, so that was a really good tournament if you guys didn't get a ch chance to watch it I think they have VODs uh, vi video of the days on their uh, on their website, you can check them out. Some really good games played. Uh, but anyway, uh, Thorzane, <coughs> he's opening up pretty standard. Looks like he might, uh, well, we'll have to see what he wants to go. Thorzane is known for, uh, he's throwing down a factory. Okay, so we'll probably see it, be seeing a Hellion opening. Thorzane is known as the Spoon Terran. And that was a name that was given to him by some Korean players who noticed that his play style uh, was a little bit out of the ordinary in that when he was killing his opponents, uh, he wouldn't go for the kill right away, he would slowly kind of beat them to death by attacking them over and over and over again and just keep hitting them and hitting them. So somebody commented that when you watch Thorzane kill somebody in this game, uh, it, it's kind of like watching him kill somebody with a spoon. So that's how he got the nickname Spoon Terran. But anyway, Thorzane, very good player, and um, I guess he uh, he's practicing a little bit more on the uh, North American server, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so yes, yeah, so he's going to be throwing down this reactor as soon as that finishes, he'll start to make some uh, some Hellions come out. Sheth in the meantime, looks like he's on to this, he's got a spine crawler coming down. Uh, he did in fact uh, get to scout with this overlord here, so... Uh, and it's it's a pretty good bet that someone like Thorzane and Sheth, they know each other's playstyles really well. They know that they both like to play macro games, they don't like to do a whole lot of cheese. I don't think I've ever seen Sheth do much of a cheese. Uh, the, probably the biggest cheese I've seen him do is like a Roach Baneling 2 base all in or something like that. Uh, but you, this is going to be pretty cool to watch, so we're going to see uh, a really interesting uh, matchup. And uh, Antigua Shipyard is kind of a Terran favored map for the reason that the 3 command center build that Thorzane is doing right now uh, isn't actually, is, is actually really strong because you can secure this base uh, fairly easily. Uh, so Thorzen actually scouting with his first Hellions, he never bothered to scout, uh, which is uh, it's, it's a viable thing to do, especially against Zerg. You know that Zergs like to go for the macro game, they're probably not going to rush you, especially someone like Sheth. So he just scouts with his first uh, couple Hellions so that he has an extra SCV to get that third command to run out as fast as possible. And uh, it's a good choice by him, I, I think I like it. I've seen him do some really, really strong pushes off three command centers early on uh, on this map, and it can be tough uh, to kind of defend, especially against siege tanks in certain positions here. Sheth is going to get a couple of Zerglings roasted away here. But uh, Sheth has been joining up really hard this whole time. 
He's now taking a, a second gas, and he's got only two two queens at the front. So Thorzin's going to try and poke in here. We'll see if he's able to get anything done, or if he's going to have to back off. So for now, he's going to be playing it cautiously. What he wants to do here is he wants to prevent Sheth from spreading this creep down onto the low ground. If he can do that, then this will be some pretty successful Hellion harass. Actually, six Hellions now, which is kind of unusual. It's, it's a lot of Hellions. Uh, so that's going to prompt Sheth to throw down a Roach Worm, just in case there is a Hellion Marauder push coming, which can be very strong. And he creates a nice little wall here. Uh, actually, he's unable to because this Creep Tumor, you can drive right over that. We'll have to see if that comes into play. But two Evo Chambers coming down for Sheth, as well as a Macro Hatch here. So we'll have to watch out. If Sheth throws down a Baneling Nest, then that could be interesting. Now... I have not seen these games before. All these games that I'm casting on my YouTube channel, I'm doing it on the fly because I don't really have time to watch them and then cast them. I'd much prefer to just simply, uh, you know, cast them uh, right away. Uh, computer, what are you doing? So, yeah, I, I really don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm as surprised as you guys, if not more so, sometimes. So uh, we're going to have to see what uh, what these players are up to. It looks like Thor's saying he's researching Stim, so he's going to probably transition into a marine tank style, which is what he likes to do. Uh, and he's, he still hasn't done much with these these Hellions, although they have caused Sheth to kind of play defensively. Sheth is still only on two bases, which, and the eight minute mark is kind of the time when you start to see these uh, Zerg start thinking about a, a third base in, in Zerg versus Terran. Um, it's a lot harder for Zergs to get up a third base in ZBT than it is in, say, ZBP, but it's it's not impossible. It, it's very doable for, for Zerg players, and Zerg players do like to try and get that third base up. So, uh, the Hunt of Zergling is coming out right now for Sheth. And like I said, this is kind of looking like he wants to maybe put on some pressure before he tries to do any sort of expansion. Uh, these these Hellions are still sitting outside of, of his base. And, uh, whoop, they're going to move, make a move in. They're going to continue to deny creep. So, all Thorzane wants to do is prevent a crazy amount of creep spread from coming in. And this was played on the ladder, so this will be a gold base. So this base will be a very important location uh, if this game goes longer than three bases or so. Shethno, he's moving his lings over here. I'm not really sure why he's doing that. Possibly setting up for a flank. Thorzane now continuing to produce marines and tanks. He's going to be sieging up this main area here, which is uh, a very, very nice area to defend. If you can get siege tanks, it helps a lot. So now Shethi is going to be circumnavigating this watchtower, even though he controls it, so maybe that's just a bit of a... Uh, uh, they're going to get shelled here, these Zerglings are going to move into position, and yeah, Shethi, you got to back off. Sheth loses a lot of Zerglings there for basically nothing. But he was able to kind of test the waters, he now knows that Thorzane's going for this marine tank style, uh, although not much of a surprise there, I'm sure, for Sheth. And uh, he's working on getting his third base up. So let's see, Sheth looks like he's pretty oversaturated, he's got a ton of drones, so it could have been beneficial to maybe try and get that third out, but you really need to control this bottom area if you want to get your third up, and it's a lot easier for Terrans, um, because they can get siege tanks, which they want to get anyway, but throw, for a Zerg to throw down extra spine crawlers, it can hinder their economy, so... Anyway, both these players continuing to macro up Thorzane now at 5 tanks and about 15 marines and it looks like he wants to push with this as well as his, his these Hellions. Now these Hellions are great supporting units because it, when used properly with the tanks they can prevent Zerglings from getting any sort of a surround on them. Thorzane's going to be sieging up here and he's going to get up a shot on that queen. He's not going to kill it. A scan coming down to try and kill these creep tumors and Thorzane continuing to poke in here. Sheth now coming around the middle. He looks like he wants to set up a counterattack. He's going to go for the flank, but Thorzane is onto this. He's actually retreating. All the, the tanks are unseaged, so will Sheth go for the engagement here? And he's thinking about it. And that that siege up is me going to mean that Sheth needs to get out of there with these Zerglings. And uh, Sheth did, have, did throw down a Roach Warren, and he, but he's still only producing Zerglings, so... Uh, it looks like he wants to go for drops, actually. He's got he's researching burrow, he's researching drop, and he's researching, researching plus two, plus two for his zerglings, and now he's transitioning it to spire. So uh, we'll have to see what Sheth wants to do. From here, he can go either for infestors into broodlords or just go for mutalists. And uh, I'm going to guess he wants to go for broodlords since you can get some broodlords here. It's it's really good. Man, look how close their bases are. Sheth's trying to get to a surround on these hellions. He manages to get one before the marines show up. 
and a few Zerglings taking some hits there. And surprisingly, uh, Thorzin hasn't gone for any drops, although these are nicely positioned spore crawlers. Chef going to be taking that Zell Naga Tower, and he's going for two more bases up in the top left. And now this is Thorzane's time to shine. He's up, uh, he's up about 30 supply right now, well, 20 supply now, and he wants to push. So, Chef, does Chef have a Baneling Nest? This is a lot of Marines, and I don't think he has a Baneling Nest, so this could be problematic. Thorzane wants to control the middle of the map. If he can do that, he pretty much wins the game. But now Chef is going to be trying to take out a few of these Marines with some Zerglings. But, uh, man, I don't know. The lack of a Banelings Nest might be really tough here. You, normally, when, when somebody goes for a Marine tank, you want to get Banelings out in addition to your Mutalisks. The Mutalisks then can therefore hunt down. And, whoa, a big run by going into the main for Chef here. And Chef's actually going to be able to... Thorzain wasn't onto this. He, all his supply depots were kept down. And Chef was able to get a bunch of Zergans into the main. But it looks like he's going to be able to deal with this really well. Now Thorzane pushing forward with a few marines here, and Chef has gone just for infestors at this point, but a lot of marines actually dying there, and oh man, these Zergans are continuing to wreak havoc in the mineral lines uh, of Thorzane, and he actually he actually dropped them in. So wow, this is pretty interesting. Chef utilizing drops on a map where Terran typically goes for drops. Now Chef's trying to move in with the rest of his Zerglings, and man, that is a lot of Zerglings, Artosis. Thorzane having trouble pushing forward here with all of these uh, infestors, but they're all getting killed pretty low on energy, and it, this is starting to look like a base trait scenario, except that the chef is going to be in a really good spot to defend against this as well with all these infestors. So here we go, Thorzane coming in with some more units. Another fungal growth is going to go down, and he's going to move in with these zerglings to try and take out the marines, and these forces are looking very weak. Only four or five siege tanks and a few uh, less than 16 marines. Meanwhile, back in the main base, Thorzane has managed to finally clean up all of those units, but his economy has been messed up pretty badly, although his third base is still up and running. Chef now coming in with some more Zerglings, and now Thorzane is going to return the favor, and he's going to start dropping. And this is starting to look a little bit more like what you would normally see. Chef smartly realizing the siege tank is there, he's going to use some infested Terrans to try to defend this, but those are not going to be as good as real Terrans in this situation. And Chef's actually going to lose his third base here. So, yeah, and that's what, one of the things about this map, is that drops are very strong, but uh, actually what happens is normally the, the Terran will do the dropping. In this case, uh, Chef was able to uh, kind of beat him to the punch. Uh, what I see a lot of Zergs doing in close positions like this is actually skipping Overlord speed. Since Overlords have had their speed buffed recently, you can just kind of go for Ventral Sacks and not worry about the extra 100, 100 to uh, move their speed up. Anyway, Chef now does have five Broodlords out. But Thorzen is going to be able to massacre this base in no time at all. Those 2-2 two, two upgrades, 3-3 three, three is about to finish. So Thorzane looking to be in a good spot here with some really well upgraded marines. It's going to be tough actually. An Infestor coming in here is he going to get that fungal. Yes he does. Great fungal goes down and all these marines are going to die. Meanwhile Thorzane trying to take the middle base and it looks like he's actually going to back off here. Realizing that he maybe can't secure this position with five siege tanks. What's he actually going to do? He looks like he wants to float it over to this location but uh, yeah Chef already has some zerglings there. So, Sheth with some Corruptors, and his third base is uh, still down, two Marines still there, uh, and Sheth is, has not been able to replenish his supply very much. Uh, the, only, the only thing he really has going for him at this point in the game are these five Broodlords, uh, and the fact that he can, he can drop if he would like, so that's one thing I'd like to see Zergs use more is, uh, is dropping. The problem is that it, it's kind of an expensive upgrade at, for the early game. But uh, once you get towards the end of the mid game, it starts to become very viable. So let's see. Sheth looks like he only has a few infestors. Actually, he's a bunch of infestors. Wow. I take that back. He's got about eight infestors and five broodlords. So normally you'd want to have more broodlords because five broodlords die to marines pretty quickly. But uh, in this case, uh, you know, Sheth he could have a bigger army, and and Thorzane's uh, almost maxed out again. So it looks like Thorzane wants to move across the map this time with a ton. Of siege tanks, two Thors, and three three Marines are going to be really hard to take out here. So Sheth getting his own three three upgrades for his Zerglings, working on replacing a few of them, but he's just not managed to retain a lot of his units. 
uh, throughout this game and uh, his third base is just now just now coming back up and uh, Thorzen's gonna scan here so he's gonna see the position of Sheth's army and he's gonna try and move in Sheth did in fact lose this base again with, uh, due, due to a drop uh, so this is gonna be really tough for Sheth we'll see if he's gonna be able to actually uh, come back from this and he's gonna try and break the contain here all these tanks are unseaged but there is a lot of marines in the background big thing is going to come down to these investors and they're getting taken out by siege tanks here and I just don't think Sheth's going to quite have enough what's going to happen if all these marines die then they the brutalers can clean everything up but I don't think that's going to happen and yeah even the Thor's going to get on the action only one brutaler remaining and it's going to be tough for Sheth to come back from this supplies now basically doubled I think we'll probably be seeing GG here in a second so well it's been an interesting game so far. I mean, Chef had some really good moves there. He was able to uh, kind of cripple Thorzane a little bit, but uh, with all those mules and everything, uh, there's really not much that Chef can do uh, on this map in these positions. It's really tough for Zerg, uh, but he did have the right idea with some of those drops. I'd like to see Zerg players utilize that more and more. Uh, and anyway, Thorzane showing off his skill here, able to come back from a crisis and uh, still manage to win. Uh, that's one of the things about Thorzen is he seems like no matter what kind of bad stuff happens to him, he still manages to come back and do some really good stuff. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this cast. I'll have another game from Sheth and the same replay pack. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.